Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another weekly edition of Condo Insider, which is um, put on by Hawaii Council of Community Associations. It's one of our um, education avenues um, that we do. We've been doing it for, I want to say, seven or eight years now. Um, so I'm one of your hosts. And today I have with me, I'm really um, happy and lucky to have with me um, Bruce Rivera's, who is with Longbridge Financial. So part of my um, role as a host is finding, um, helping to find solutions um, um, that could help us in condos. Um, and we all know that one of the big issues that has been um, the last couple of years are the rising maintenance fees. And a lot of it is related to the LSE, as we know. So there's about 300 buildings that were impacted by the life safety valuation um, that brought in some additional costs. And also with that came the humongous rise in our insurance premiums related to fire sprinklers and also related to the LSE. Um, so, you know, some of us were facing like triple digit increases in our um, um, condo master policy insurance, which really wasn't planned for. So there were some um, condos that were facing um, special assessments or humongous increases in their maintenance fees. And one of the big um, comments that I always hear from, from board of directors is like, but we have a lot of people here on fixed income. So we really are shy to raise maintenance fees, but that's really something that you really can't not raise maintenance fees because of that reason, because eventually down the road, you're gonna get stuck with a special assessment. And to me, that's gonna be worse because how many people do you know that really have a healthy savings account that they can draw from, you know? Even as seniors, some of them are living from their monthly check to monthly check, just like we live paycheck to paycheck sometimes, you know? So I was looking for other ways that we could um, help and encourage some people to really think financially sound and start planning financially um, for the future if they're gonna age and um, live out their golden years in their condominium. And this can also apply to single families as well, but our focus today is, is trying to help to help ease the burden when it comes to condos. So I want to introduce um, Bruce Ramirez with Long, Longbridge Financial. So Bruce, thank you for joining me today. Aloha, Raylene. Thank you so much for inviting me to your show. And I'm very happy to be here and, and hopefully provide some insight to uh, regarding the seniors that we're discussing about here today, and especially in particular with the condo associations that you deal with. And you brought up a, an interesting point here regarding seniors and the rising costs. And we really have a retirement crisis in America these days. You know, when you have, you know, seniors, which are living longer, 90% of seniors, you know, 65 and older, prefer to stay in their homes as long as possible. Yet only one in three seniors feel like they can adequately provide the necessary features that they need as they age. So here's a real crisis in terms of how do they afford the upkeep of their existing property, how do they make enhancements to it? And when you look what's happened in the last couple of years in terms of the uh, retirement accounts, you know, with this economy, and you mentioned earlier that the fixed income and what's happened to social insecurities, I'll refer to it. This is a double-edged sword. It's hitting all of Americans at one time or another. So it's a real crisis. And again, I'm really thankful you brought me on here today. And uh, hopefully we can provide at least one or two solutions here for those seniors where there might be an absolute need and desire to improve the quality of their lives. Okay, so let's start off talking about the reverse mortgage. So we typically, um, everybody knows what a HECM is, um, the home equity conversion mortgage, which is an FHA um, product. So tell us a little bit about the HECM. So the other word, as you mentioned, reverse mortgage, and basically it's, it's just a lien on your property. What it does, it pays off your existing lien and allows you to no longer have to make a monthly mortgage payment. An average mortgage payment is $1,500 a month. That can be a huge savings to a senior. But in a lot of cases, there's also an available line of credit that the seniors will have access to as well. So therefore, by limiting that possible monthly mortgage payment and then having access to a line of credit, that can really supplement their monthly income. So. Another way of looking at it too with, with this market, how it's taken a major dip, imagine having to sell off assets right now as the market has been dipping there. And that may not be the most, uh, efficacious, uh, most effective way 
uh, managing their funds and taking into consideration a line of credit well, right now is growing at about 8%, uh, can be a huge boon to a senior. Imagine paying off a, a lien of $50,000 and maybe having access to a line of credit of $100,000. And if it doesn't need to be touched at this point, you know, at a growth rate around 8%, that means in about nine years, the $100,000 line of credit will double to $200,000. If you're a 62-year-old senior and are not needing to touch that until your early 80s, that could be around $400,000 sitting there and then accessible. Because when you look at it, just look at long-term care insurance. Only about 13% of seniors have it. The majority of them cannot afford roughly $125,000 in long-term care. Most people don't realize Medicare doesn't want to cover long-term care. So let's um, kind of go that. So, so basically, you have to be 62 years and older. You have to live in that property. So it has to be your primary residence. Six months and a day per year. Right. Um, and it works best when you have um, a little bit of a mortgage balance. You know, if you have a huge mortgage balance against what your appraised value is going to be, it may not, it may not work. Just so depending the, on the age and other criteria, right? The loan to value, obviously, the older you are, the more that could be loaned to you. Okay, so the higher balance, it, it's easier to pay that off, you know, the higher, you know, the older that you are there. So at age 62, maybe about a 30% LTV, you get up higher in upper 80s, could hit upwards of around 70, 75% LTV. Okay. And then you brought out about the line of credit. And I think that's where some people not, may not understand the beauty part of a reverse, if you can access, uh, put um, some of those funds into a line of credit versus taking the whole cash out and um, doing whatever you're going to do with it. But if you put that into a line of credit, it's going to draw interest at the rate of your reverse mortgage. Correct. Right. Okay. That is correct. It's going to be compounded. So it's going to grow mm -hmm. faster and grow tremendously faster if you put it into a bank savings account. Mm-hmm. Right. The beauty is you can take out, if you want to set up an term payment where each month you want to take out $1,000, you can set it up that way. If you want a lifetime payment where you have longevity in your family and everyone lives to 110, you can set up a lifetime payment to far exceed your life expectancy and the funds will always continue to be paid to you. Or you can let, sit on it and take a lump sum at your convenience. If you feel like you need to make some improvements to your property, take a vacation, Maybe help the grandchildren, help with college, take a trip, various options at your discretion. And I think that's where um, doing the line of credit versus taking out a lump sum is the one that is going to be the most advantageous to any senior, especially when they're on a fixed income. Um, that could be their emergency money. Yes. You know, um, and we also have to remember and remind our, our audience that um, you may not have a mortgage payment, but you're still responsible for property taxes and insurance. And, um, and upkeep of your property. Upkeep of your property. Very important as well, too. Right. Those three elements. Right. No uh -huh. different than a forward transaction, forward loan, property tax. Correct. Right. And the one thing about a reverse that I notice is, um, is if you don't make your property taxes and um, insurance payments, I mean, they can call the loan due. Um Unlike a forward or a regular mortgage, but on a reverse mortgage, um, the lender, if you don't make those payments, they can call that loan due. So that that's a big can of worms. Um, so so you're telling me, let me ask you this in the forward world, which I've never been a part of. What happens if you don't pay your property taxes and insurance there over time? Well, um, in the pro for the insurance, they give notice to the borrower that they don't have insurance. So they give them time to provide um, proof of insurance. Uh, if they don't get that within that timeline, then the lender can do forced place insurance. Forced place insurance only covers the lender. It does not cover like the contents of the house or sure. anything like that. It's only going to protect the lender on the mortgage. You know, um, when it comes to property taxes here, um, we're kind of unique, not like other states where they really are um, pretty aggressive. If you if you um, are late on your property taxes. I mean, I've known some people that were like years late and still not a whole lot of activity happened. Um, they're pretty say, well, just pay something, you know? Um, but still, that can create that lender to call that more reverse mortgage due, you know? Or just pay out those issues there too. Yeah. Right? So it's, you got to think about if, you're, if you are on average eliminating a $1,500 a month mortgage payment, funds really should be there to pay the property taxes, the insurance, if you're making them prior. 
And you can also set up a, an impound account when you get the reverse mortgage where actual funds are actually pulled from your line of credit. They also accrue interest at the same rate as what your line of credit does. So therefore, you have more funds in there to cover your property taxes and insurance on your behalf. So borrower can actually request that. And therefore, they don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, and the one thing too that um, I know with the companies I've been with uh, before, um, one of the rules of thumbs that we have when it comes to reverse is to make sure your siblings, your children are aware of this reverse. And I know that was one of the biggest complaints up to the federal government is when the seniors had passed, the, par the kids did not know that they had, the parents had a reverse mortgage. So essentially they thought they were going to get something free and clear. So they're surprised to have this big debt, and what they're going to do with, you know. Surprised how many seniors did not want their kids to be involved whatsoever, okay, in their financial affairs. And that happens quite a bit. Then there are plenty of times where you do have the kids, which are heavily involved, and trying to do the right thing by their parents as well, too, and therefore should be brought into the loop with the communication. So it's yeah. an individual basis in terms of which direction that is going to part go. Right, right. But it's always best to at least, um, you really need to do it correctly. Um, it's always good to get a trust attorney involved so that there's, you know, that part of it done. And yeah, the trust involved, absolutely, we have to see the trust. Right. Okay. So that will be reviewed with our trust attorneys. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, and then also one other thing too about the line of credit, it will draw, it, it'll gain interest, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's compounded and the IRS has already made it known that the proceeds from a reverse is cannot be considered income. So you're not having to report that, that um, line of credit income or gain as well on your income tax returns. Correct. That's correct because all you're doing is tapping into your existing equity. Yeah, right. So it's a plus plus if you plan it correctly. If the bars plan it correctly, and um, try to um, take advantage or put into practice what is available out there to help them age friendly, age healthy, healthy, and um, age with like a couple seniors that. Um, they said, I don't want no stress as I grow old. <laughs> sure, sure. And that's why it should be part of your financial strategy. Okay, the, the time to, to really think about getting reverse is when you don't need it. And to your point, because of the growth of line of credit, you have it available for a rainy day. For example, when you have sequential risk, what's happened to uh, a, a lot of people's investments, uh, the last thing you want to be doing is selling off the assets and therefore you're losing the, the financial, you know, uh, the money coming in on a monthly basis, and therefore on the down years, being able to access portions of the line of credit to supplement your income until your assets start performing better. And the studies have shown that by the end, you know, nearing your, you know, 85, 90 years of age, there's typically a lot more available in your assets by using that combined strategy. Okay. So we talked, you know, that's the basic, uh, pretty much the basic sliver reverse. And usually the most common one is a HECM. But with Longbridge, you have other products that might be um, even even suitable because with HECMs, it has to be, if you're in a condo, you have to get that condo project um, FHA approved. And is, for some of us here in Hawaii, that could be a challenge because we need, as an agent company, a lot, some documentation that sometimes we have challenges getting that information. Sure. So use so that long, product, we can kind of bypass that route. Right. Sure. But Going back to the HACMs, if it is a situation where the condo association is not FHA approved, Longbridge does work with a third-party vendor in terms of trying to get them approved. So we definitely try and assist them that standpoint, okay? If it's a situation where that can't happen, we do have uh, other solutions. One is called our Platinum Jumbo product. Uh, with this situation, the property values need to be a minimum of $450,000. And then we have a, a limited review process that we can utilize and to go ahead and get a, a jumbo reverse on that property when it's a condo. Okay. Who pays for the cost? Because that's one of the other misnomers is, um, I know for the for a company we worked with, um, that, I, that I have my license with, um, when we were trying to get it FHA approved, the uh, management company had told them, oh no, but there's a cost to it that the condo has to pay. And we were like, no, you don't pay it. We're paying that cost that's, um, so we pay FHA the, their cost or whatever it is. And so um, 
you know, we want to kind of make it clear that the, the board or the condo does not pay um, for that, typically for that FHA cost. It does not come out of their pocket. Right. Uh, okay. Um, because we want to kind of get that out of people's heads because I've heard it repeatedly um, over the years. And I go, no, you're, you've got misinformation in your head. Correct. And that's, that's where it's important to work with a loan officer that's skilled in reverse and to be very aware of that. Yeah. Vitally important. <laughs> okay, so what other things can you educate our um, our um, our seniors, our audience on? Um, I mean, for condos, is your policy the same for townhouses? Because we do have a lot of townhouses here. Uh, no, you, you don't have to go through the same approval when it's a townhome. It's just specific towards the condos, so much easier on the townhomes, which is beneficial. Now, in terms of getting back to, you have a question there. No. Okay. Getting back to the, the jumbo product, there's some differences there. There was no mortgage insurance required. Okay. Which which is big with the with the jumbo excuse me, with the heck reverse mortgages. There is a mortgage insurance there, which is a protection designed for the borrowers there. It keeps the loan non recourse, meaning they can never owe more on the property than what it appraised for. And also think about when when COVID hit, for those that had HELOCs, what happened to them? Some of them got closed. They went away. You know what happened to reverse mortgages? Nothing. We were still doing them. You still had the line of credit grow. That's a protective hedge that borrowers receive due to the mortgage insurance premium. Now, for the jumbo product, the platinum product, we actually do not incur a, a mortgage insurance premium to the borrowers there. Okay? So it's factored into the loan. The, the loan to value is a little bit less. But we can actually loan up to $4 million with that product for your higher end homes. Okay. Or if you get a very high end condo. Okay. So it, it's smaller on the fees there. And we do have both fixed and line of credit options there as well, too. The growth of line of credit is much smaller and it only grows for seven years, but you have 10 years to utilize that line of credit. With the HECM, it's indefinite. If you have the funds available on line of credit, you have it forever to tap into. It'll never go away. This product's been around for about 35 years and are FHA insured. And um, HECM has been around for since before 1989, because I know it was signed into law by President Reagan. Yeah, but... Reagan in, in, eight, in 88. So the first one actually occurred, I think, around 1961. But Reagan started making changes to the program in 1988, made it official. And actually, I think it's 1991, about three years later. So for our audience out there, it's really not something new. It's been around for a long time. So it's it's gone through its um it's gone through it's finding whatever, as I want to say, pukas, you know, to get it to the where it is today. So it's not something new. It's it's tried and true. And if it's been there that long, it's got it's 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 something that has survived and is well deserved and um it serves its purpose. So um uh, we don't want, I don't want people to think that, oh, but, you know, it's it's new. And, you know, it's been around since this, um, the late 80s, the, well, actually 60s, you know. Um, so it's it's been around. And they will not take, when you die, they will not take your house. Why well, make And that's the beauty part of the reverse. So the, the last part has passed, right? Let's address that. If yeah. the heirs are your kids... They can go ahead and get a new loan on the property and take it over. They have up to a year. They can either sell the property and take the equity out of there. Uh, if it, and they have up to a year to go ahead and do that. And, and the beautiful thing is, since the loan to values are lower than a typical forward loan, those loans are typically not going upside down when you factor in the home appreciation. So you can have a situation where borrowers taking funds out on a monthly basis and still turn over a large inheritance to their kids. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just that if, if you know the, the, the parent passes on, just for the kids to notify the servicer as soon as that they can. And then again, they have six months and they can ask for two, three month extensions, have up to a year to go ahead and either sell their property or to get a new loan on their property and then take it over. Um, so let me ask you this question. You could explain this to our, our audience. So what happens if the loan balance is say um, 500,000, but the property is only worth and it only sold for 300,000? So if the market dropped out and they had that loan for a really long time and now it's upside down, 
Well, that goes back to the beauty of the non-recourse feature of this loan. If that property is appraised for $300,000, the borrowers that they would like, or excuse me, the, the, the heirs that they would like, can purchase that property for 95% of the appraised value. So for $285,000 plus any realtor fees associated with that. The difference between that amount and the 500000 owed is covered by the mortgage insurance for the property. So that one would only qualify under a HECM, but not your other proprietary. That would qualify for a HECM, but we have the same built-in benefits with their general product. If it's upside down, they will not owe more than their appraised amount on that property. And you know, that to me is the beauty part of, the, of, the, of a reverse mortgage because we all know in Hawaii, home ownership is just like, is is gold i mean it is it is your your gold bar you know so um if the whole intent is to try to keep the um home in the family and that's one of the things too in creating a trust is that you can determine who's going to be the one um or the most responsible one that can pot potentially um buy it out at the end so that they can keep it in that family and when you look at the numbers if you're upside down and uh, someone can qualify to buy it out I mean, it really makes sense to try to keep it in the family as much as you can. Because um, I did have one scenario where um, it was two brothers. Um, they didn't want to keep the... One brother could qualify with his existing mortgage. He qualified to maintain that debt. And I said, why don't you rent it out? You can rent it out for double of what your mortgage payment will be. You know? Like, well, your son's 17 years old. That could be his house in a, in a, in a few years. Mm -hmm. you know? um, but they ended up selling it. I was kind of disappointed about that. <laughs> was, right. I loved that house because it was in a cul-de-sac. Now, something, something else for, for senior borrowers to consider. So I'm worried about the, you know, the, the lean, you know, the loan amount growing over time, the interest accruing. Make interest only payments. This is the beauty of the Hackam, the Hackam Flex. You have the ability to make partial payments. Maybe you want to take a break three months over the holidays because you're spoiling the grandkids. Or maybe you just like, you can't afford the 1500 a month, but you can handle the 500 monthly in terms of the interest amount. And therefore that balance does not accrue. So yep, you can be very strategic in terms of how to utilize this. Yep, actual flexibility, forward loans. You have to make that payment every single month regardless. Okay? Yep. With yep. reverse, you have the flexibility with it as necessary, as needed. This is something that I sent, um, I said to one couple, we were sitting on their deck as we were looking out at the beach because they have an oceanfront property and I've known them for a long time. And they said, and they're very diligent on maintaining their house, making sure everything's taken care of in the upkeep and all of that. And I said, and they're retired now. They've been retired now for six years um, and they're aging. They're in their sure. late seventies. And I said, you know, you have guys have worked hard to maintain your house. You've done everything you're supposed to, to maintain your house. Now it's time for the house to take care of you. What a concept. Yeah, and they sat for a minute. They go, yeah, that's right. I go, you've got this equity, you know. Um, everything's paid off. You've got this equity. You're fairly debt-free, you know, but they just want to live um, stress-free without having to worry about money, you know. Um, so, and theirs is probably going to be a jumbo, but that was their thing, and and. So that kind of set them into a little bit less of a um, of, of a stress mode, you know. Um, sure. and, and really, when you think about it that way, you know, you have everybody. Everybody has worked hard to pay their mortgage, to maintain their properties. You know, in their golden years, it's now time for something for someone to take care of them, and that it potentially could be their house. I agree. I agree. I had this conversation with my father. He's ninety three years old this year. Does not have a mortgage. Last year, he told me, well, when I pass on, you kids didn't you can get all the money. He's like, Dad, what's your money? I don't care. Spend, do something with it. And when's the last time you've seen a hearse towing a U-Haul? It just doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, but this mindset, you know, the great generation there is to, I, you know, I want to keep it for the kids. It's like, we're okay. Take yeah. care of all. Have a better quality of life. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was to consider. Yep. Well, we're hitting near the end time. So, Bruce, um, I really would love to have you on another segment where you can do a reverse for a purchase, which is another um, opportunity to um, to do a reverse mortgage um, and to um, even gain wealth that way. Um, but maybe in the future that we can schedule um, another segment for. Um, love, would love to. Yeah. 
Yeah, it'd and, be better if you actually convinced my boss to fly me out here to do it in first, <laughs> just like this. I love Dry Island, by the way. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bruce. Um, and again, anybody has any questions, they can always call, reach out to us, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, and um, everybody have a good rest of your week and a good weekend. There is a long weekend coming up, I think. Yeah. Labor Day weekend coming up. So be safe out there. Um, it's the weather's kind of really weird. So be safe with the weather. Um, and be be really, really safe out there. Um several catastrophes happening around the world, around the country, and within even in Hawaii too, with all these fires and things of that nature. So um Bruce, I want to really thank you for being on the show with me today. Thank and you thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Mahalo. Mm -hmm.